integers, uh, mathematically speaking, integers range from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now we talk about natural numbers being the the non-negative subset of those infinitely many integers. Integers have properties. Now, for example, we can tell that the commutative property says that no matter what order you add the integers, you get the same result. And this property, the additive inverse property, says that given an integer x, you can find another integer called negative x whose sum is going to be zero. And these properties allow us to prove certain things and theorems about integers. Now, integer representations can be done in multiple bases. In computer science, we talk about these three bases in, in particular. Now, base 10 means that you have numbers, the digits. You can write any number using the digits from 0 to 9. There are 10 digits that you can use. Like, for example, if you write 432, what that means is it's 4 times 10 squared and 3 times 10 to the power 1 and 2 times 10 to the power 0. In other words, these things represent the coefficients for 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, and 10 squared. Same way if you have base 2, you only have two choices. So in this case, if you take the base 2 bit pattern, 1, 1, 0, 0, what this means is 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 squared, and 2 cubed. So in other words, this represents the number 8 plus 4, which is equal to 12 in decimal base. Now base 16 allows us to use 16 digits, 0 to 9, and A represents 10, B 11, and then finally F, F represents the number 15. Now in this case, if you write something like C2, what we mean by that is the C is the number 12, which is represented by the bit pattern 1100, and 2 is the number given like this. So the, the binary representation 1100 can be shown um, using C2. Limitations of machines. Now, machines are finite. So there are ranges of integers that we can use. Now, typically, integers are 32 bits or 64 bits. But for simplicity, I'm going to assume, for demo purposes, that I'm working with just 4 bits. Now, what that means is I can have the smallest number I can have in here is the number 0. The next one I can have here is the number 1. The next one I can have here is number 2. And the largest one I can have here is 1111. That represents the number 15. So if I have 15, uh, 4 bits to represent numbers, I can represent six numbers, uh, 16 numbers from 0 to 15. So what about 16? 16 is, in fact, is equal to 0. Um, so if you add 1, if you take 15 and add 1, we get 0, 16. But in modular arithmetic, this is equal to 0. If you take 15 and add 2, you will get 17. This is equal to 1, and so on. Representing negative numbers. So what about negative numbers? We talked about those positive numbers. Now what we mean by a negative number is we say x is equal to negative y, or x is the negative of y, if and only if x plus y is equal to 0. To demonstrate this, let's start with the number 2. So the number 2 is 0, 0, 1, 0. Now the question is, what can I add? Or what we know that if you add num negative 2, I need to get a 0 here. So what bit pattern can I add if I perform binary addition will give me the 0? Like for instance, if you give 0 here, 0 plus 0 is 0. So that's good. Then if I put a 1 here, 1 plus 1 is 0 and a carry 1. So I put a 1 here, 1 plus 1 is 0 is a carry 1. So in other words, if I define my negative 2 like this, then I will be getting the negative 2 is the bit pattern 1110. So now, how do I know that? If I add these two numbers, then I will be getting the number 0. And the, the other one is an overflow. So now, 
given this, this means that how do we get this number? How do we get this bit pattern? Now, we call that the two's complement. So the two's complement, two's complement of two is obtained by taking two and negating the bits of two. Negating the bits of two will give me one, one, zero, one. And then adding one will give me what I'm looking for. So one plus one is zero, and I carry one, and a one, and a one. So here's the representation of negative two. So if you take the two's complement of negative two, then you would get positive two. So in other words, the two's complement of negative two is equal to the tilde two plus one. Now I have not talked about the tilde. Tilde is a bitwise operator that I will discuss in a little bit. Now binary addition, I already showed you an example of binary addition. If you have a two, num uh, two bit patterns here, that I can perform binary addition as follows. 1 plus 1 is 0 and I carry 1. 1 plus 1 is 0 and I carry 1. 3 is a 1 and I carry 1. 2 is a 0 and I carry 1. 3 is a 1 and a carry 1, 2 is a 0 and a carry 1, and 1 and a carry 1, and 1 and a carry 1. Now this is an overflow bit. So the summation of these two things come to that. Integer division and modulus. Now when we try to divide integers in computers, let's say that we want to divide 3 by 2. We want the answer to be an integer again. So we take 3 divided by 2 to be the quotient when we 3 divided by 2. Then we also have another operator we introduce as modulus, which is 3 mod 2 is the remainder when 3 is divided by 2. So what's the relation that it needs to satisfy? So the two operators, the division and the modulus, must satisfy this property. 3 divided by 2 times 2, and then 3 mod 2 must be equal to the, the number 3. So since this is equal to 1 and this is equal to 1, we have a uh, equation that is uh, true. Now what if 3 is negative 2? Uh, um, uh, three, 3 is negative. So the same properties hold. So in other words, if you have the modulus of negative 3 modular 2, and this would give you the remainder, which is a negative number, this is a negative number, so the answer is negative 3. In other words, if the x is negative, so in general we can write like this, x divided by y times y plus x mod y is equal to x. So if x is negative, then the modulus is negative, as well as the quotient, the division is also negative. Bitwise operations. There are a few bitwise operations I want to discuss. The bitwise AND, bitwise exclusive O, bitwise O, and bitwise negation. So the examples are like if you take the 1, 1, 0, 1, and bitwise AND with 1, 0, 1, 1, we do the bitwise ending here. 1 and 1 is 1. 0 and 1 is 0. And 1 and 0 is 0. 1 and 1 is 1. So here's the bitwise hand. If you take the same numbers and do the bitwise O, then you will get the 1 and 1. 1 O 1 is 1. 1 O 0 is 1. 0 O 1 is 1. And 1 O 1 is 1. Based on that table. Now exclusive O operator applies as follows. Now exclusive O is 1 only if one of them is 0. So for instance here 1 and 1 would be 0. 1 and 0 would be 1. 0 and 1 would be 1. 1 and 1 would be 0. So for example we know that if the two things have the same bit pattern the exclusive O will give you 0. Negation is just taking something, as you saw on the two's complement, and negating the bits. It gives you 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. 
Now, there are two other bitwise operations that are important that will be discussed here. The shifting operator, so x shifted n means that the x, the bit pattern of x is shifted by n places. For example, if you take 1101 and let's make it and 0011, if you take this and then if you shift it to the left by two places, what will happen is the you will get this pattern 111101. Notice there are two things that are coming from the right. They are filled by zeros. Now, if you do the right shift with the same number, you would be getting uh, the, the following. You'll be getting um, 1111, and then you will have 00. The missing bits from the left are filled by zeros. Masking. Now, masking is a good technique for isolating bits and bytes. Like, for example, if you have the the bitwise pattern here, 1101, how do we isolate the least significant four bits of this thing? So, one of the things we can do is we can take a mask like this, hexadecimal 0 and the hexadecimal F, and then we can do the bitwise N. So when we do that, we do know that we're going to get zero here because this is all zeros here. And the F means all ones, and that means I'm going to just recover the same bit pattern. So by doing the masking, I'll be able to ex get the first, the least significant four bits of this thing. How about if I want to get the, the next four bits? So one of the technique I can use is I can take 1101 and 1101 and bit shift by 4 bits. Now when I do that, I'm going to get these guys. In fact, in this case, it happens to be the same. But this will be shifted here and you will have 000 and then you will have 1101. So now by doing the same type of a, a technique, you would be able to isolate those four bits. Now this is the end of the lecture and we will talk more about this in class on Tuesday.